In China, 40 million people still live in caves. That's about the entire population of Poland, one of the biggest countries in Europe. And one day, we all may follow their example. Why? Today I will try to answer that by experiencing life in one of those caves. How does it look like? How do people stay warm? How do they sleep? What do they eat? And what is it like to live in a cave? And also, what legendary Hollywood movie used these places as an inspiration, but nobody knows about it? I will try to answer all of these questions, but First, I need to find someone who will let me stay in their home. Right now, we are at the lowest plateau in China. It is one of the poorest parts in the whole country and also one of the areas with the harshest living conditions, called winters, hellishly hot summers, strong winds and minimal rainfall. It covers an area of approximately 640,000 square kilometers, which is about the size of France, up to 7 25% of the population here lives in rural areas, of which 90% still live in caves. That's about 40 million people. These caves are called Yaodong. The Chinese have been living in Yautung caves since the second millennium BC, but not only are they still used today, there are even new ones being built. Why? Some of these cave dwellings are very poor, however some of them remind us of the riches these areas used to have. Along the Yellow River we enter the town of Chico. In the past, goods were transported across the Yellow River by ferries, making Chico an important trading town. Like other cities with concentrating wealth, it often faced attacks. To protect their families, the wealthy built cave dwellings in the mountains, hidden from thieves. And this is how the village of the Li family mountain was established, just a few kilometers from Chico. The surrounding dense mountains provided a good shelter, so good that the original architecture is preserved to this day. During the war with Japan, there was a threat of the enemy coming to this place and everyone fled. However, the enemy did not come and the people did not return for a long time. That's why during the Cultural Revolution almost no one was here and all the dwellings survived. Only a few places in China were so fortunate. This place is simply magical. I will try to spend the night here, but first I want to show you another type of Chinese cave dwellings. One you may actually know from a famous Hollywood movie. Can you guess which one? It may seem harsh to still live in a cave in the 21st century. And indeed, many people moved out to modern flats, leaving some of these caves abandoned. However, to tell you the truth, if the world continues to destroy its environment, one day we may all have to move back to caves. The weather in this area is already very apocalyptic and as the world gets warmer, cave houses are becoming efficient and useful again. Here the temperatures often exceed 40 degrees Celsius outside, but inside the cave dwelling is beautifully cool. Well, like, like a cave. During the winter, when temperatures drop to minus 20 degrees Celsius outside, the brick beds with heating underneath 
typical North China sleeping platform, also called Kang, can easily maintain a temperature from 10 to 15 degrees Celsius above zero inside. People do not only sleep on Kangs, but they do most of their activities during the winter on top of them as well. Of course, they do not use mattresses, otherwise the Kang would not heat properly, so they sleep directly on the bricks, only cover being a thin sheet. Occasionally, an electrically heated blanket, a product of modern times. Living in places like this can also be dangerous, especially during heavy rains, landslides and earthquakes. The worst tragedy occurred in 1556, when a local earthquake killed nearly a million people. Despite this, the cave dwellings are becoming increasingly popular. They attract both locals looking for a place to escape the weather, tourists as well as pop culture. <laughs> Many modern Chinese TV series have been filmed here and one famous Hollywood movie took a significant inspiration from these places. This second type of Yautung caves is known worldwide because the house where Star Wars hero Luke Skywalker grew up looks strikingly similar. Star Wars is actually full of oriental elements. The helmet of Darth Vader is modeled after the helmets of Japanese samurais, just as the main weapon of Jedi Knights, the lightsaber and its usage. The concept of the force that the Jedi Knights try to master is also inspired by a Chinese concept of qi energy. However, Chinese culture does not divide the world into good and evil as in Star Wars where there is the force and its dark side. But Chinese culture considers reality to be an ongoing struggle of various principles, which are often contradictory and our main effort is to keep them in balance, which is represented by yin and yang symbol. Master Yoda, who transforms the main hero into a true Jedi Knight, is also not a typical Western teacher. Besides his appearance, his methods point to this as well. He does not praise the student, does not lead him with positive example, but teaches passively, often critically and systematically without any curriculum and frequently improvises. These are typical traits of a Chinese or Asian teacher. Many costumes in this film series were designed based on oriental clothing as well and George Lucas also borrowed some storytelling techniques from old Chinese novels, such as episodes before the main plot and so on. This is not the end of the list of oriental elements in Star Wars, there are many many more and it is therefore very likely that the dwellings of the main hero were indeed inspired by Chinese Yatung caves. So if Luke Skywalker could live in them, why wouldn't I? Let's try to spend the night here. Yeah, <laughs> 
。我我家也能住，这两天凉可不能住，是吧？有点太凉。我进来，你进来吧。哦，好、哦，行，好。我问一问。好，谢谢，谢谢。对对对，云南跑过来的呀。下个来没有关系，你不是有脑子了，<笑>一人一百，我给咱一人带过去。他咋？他给干净，那个女的看来。来了。<笑><笑>你好，你好，麻烦你，麻烦你。你好，你好，哇，好漂亮。哎呀，哎呀，这个是行不行？行不行？完全。老虎，我给你放你，放放虎就不冷了。谢谢了，麻烦阿叔了。咱俩就睡这个炕。嗯。这个饭好好不好？这个不烂子，我们当地的这个吃的特别好。我们都是邻里邻居，这个关系都。啊，我们回来了，哦，好暖和。晚上我也看到这电褥子，天气也不怎么冷，烧一烧就挺好的了。嗯，啊，谢谢谢谢。这样子把这个给你们摆起来。好。嗯。哦哟，没有。两，我们两个人一个过来。差不多。可以，够够够够够够。那你放点这个辣，你吃。辣椒可以。是吗？辣椒。辣椒。好。好。那醋呢？再再放点醋。嗯，芝麻。可以吃辣椒吧？我吃。他也来。不行，不辣。咋？是吗？醋。他来，他来。醋，要不要喝一点？好，好嘞，谢谢。谢谢谢谢。放点醋。谢谢谢谢。谢谢。你看你们。嗯。这蛋不蛋？蛋的话放点盐。再放点盐。蛋不蛋？够了，够了，够了，够了。好的。把这个。你就把这个。这个上也。就是咸菜。这个咸菜好。这这个这个就拌里面吃好。不，不用我们，你们自己吃。就直接这样吃，行行行，对不对？啊，好。好，再放点辣椒啊！可以啊，行。你放什么？谢谢谢谢。好好，好幸福哦。嗯，谢谢你。不用谢。Mr. Lee and his family, who have invited us to stay at their place, have lived in the village Lee family mountain for generations. Their house is the largest in the entire village, and even a documentary series called Families on the Yellow River was filmed at their home. We are staying with celebrities. Initially, they didn't want to accommodate us because having guests is a great responsibility for them, and they just didn't feel ready to host us. I'm so glad that they changed their minds. Of course, thanks in a part to the local lady with the word "God" on her back, which really suited her. We have actually learned that she's also a local celebrity with hundreds of thousands of followers on TikTok. Why so many people follow her? Because living in a cave dwelling is something worth sharing. I'm really happy to be able to experience it. It's so different from the village life in Sichuan, where I have shot the last video about the secret family business. You can watch it here, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Thank you.